Welcome back to the REI Marketing Weekly. It's your host, Josh Culler with Color Media and REI.video. And I am super excited to have a good friend of mine, Brad Woodall, on the call today. Coming out of Atlanta, Georgia. Paul, uh, Brad, what's going on, man? I don't know why I almost called you Paul. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and no worries. Not too much, man. Just, uh, you know, sitting here working out of the house today and trying to keep the kids from killing themselves, you know. But, uh... <laughs> that's, that's a duty right there, then, right. like. I just got nieces and nephews and I know how that is. And so no kids yet. So we're kind of training. We're in our training stage right now with our nieces and nephews, but just wait. anyway, um, very cool. So I'm excited to have Brad on the, on the call today. Um, we've been going back and forth about figuring out what we're going to talk about. And there was uh, Brad does a lot of different things in marketing. Um, so I wanted to figure out something that not a lot of people do or talk about that he's getting value out of. And so we discover what that is. And Primarily what we're going to be talking about today is how to utilize the Google services, whether that's uh, Google My Business, YouTube, uh, SEO, pay-per-click, and all that stuff to actually set himself apart from his competition because as we, Atlanta is one of the hottest markets in the country. It's a big market too. Uh, so he's got to do something different in order to stand out above the competition. And these are we're going to talk about some of the things that he's doing with uh, the Google services and uh, you know the things that are housed with Google in order to bring leads in and uh, essentially elevate himself above the competition. So uh, before we get into that, Brad, if you could do me a huge favor and just introduce yourself a little bit about who you are, uh, what you do, how long you've been doing this and kind of your origin story of getting into real estate. Yeah, man. So, so I'm uh, obviously in the Atlanta market. I personally live about 40 miles north of Atlanta, but we buy houses all over Metro Atlanta. I mean, all the way down south by the airport, all the way up to me and up into the mountains. I mean, cover a huge geographical area. Atlanta is a very large geographic metro yeah. area. Yeah. Um, so I do that. Uh, I started um, back in, I guess, seriously market, doing direct seller marketing in 2016. Uh, we primarily wholesale. I kind of cherry picks for some fix and flips here and rental properties. And I do some owner finance notes and that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, we, uh, I kind of started out with direct mail and then got into Google pretty quickly um, and got away from direct mail and then got back to direct mail. And now I kind of do both or my strategy there. And, um, you know, again, we primarily wholesale properties um and been doing that for a number of years now uh it's just a little bit easier cleaner simpler business and i've got a team yeah. of i've got three employees that work for me so very cool awesome yeah. so let's go ahead and get into the topics for today so uh one of the things that you had mentioned was uh you know the the seo the pay-per-click that you're doing and driving leads to your website but also in addition to that you got you, you put out youtube videos you also do google my business how do you make all of that congruent with each other so that it essentially like they serve each other to bring leads in and bring relevance to uh, your marketing. Like, how are you, how are you making all that work together? Well, the main thing is that I look at my website as my core, right? And everything's going to that website, right? So like each little piece gives them a little nugget of who we are. And if they want more and they want to really learn about us, then they're going back to our website, right? We're trying to drive traffic to the site. And then I've totally customized my site um, where it looks a lot different than everyone else's. I have a lot of video content on my website itself just to stand apart from everybody else because everybody says they can pay cash and close fast. This is what I tell my team. We all can pay cash and close fast. That's not our USP. So yeah. our USP as our company is, is, we care about you. We're different than the other guys. We're actually going to close on your property and going to buy it. You know, unlike the other people put it under contract, can't find a buyer, they cancel it and they move on. Like we'll buy it. You know, I, I, I do what I say I'm going to do. And, and I've, you know, in, in, in the however five years I've been doing this, I can count on one hand, the number of contracts I've had to terminate. So, mm, wow. you know, so yeah, that's kind of how we set up. We just set ourselves apart that we're different from everybody else. And we, yeah. we tell them that, you know, we're, we're different than these guys over here. We're, you know, we're probably not going to be the best offer, but you know, you're not, you're going to walk away happy. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, for and, sure. So, and, and some, something that I want to follow up on with that is that like, and, and I just, because I know Brad, I know this is the truth, but like following up on that promise is a big part of branding. It's a big part of reputation, right? So if, if he were to put that out in his marketing and say, Hey, we're different, you know, we're different from the other guys. We're going to, we're going to close and like all this stuff, like 
like you said, any real estate investor can close fast. Any real estate investor can buy as is and, and do all these other things that everybody can do that's in this industry. But the follow-up of delivering that promise is far more marketing than the direct mail that you send out. It's far more marketing than, you know, the SEO or the PPC that you run. And, and so like, because you following up on that is a reputation builder. And we all know another word for reputation is brand and vice versa. So that will build your brand faster than anything is actually following up on a promise <laughs> that you make through your marketing, whether it's on your website and videos or whatever. So, yeah. And I make sure I tell my team members and I hired my team members specifically for their personalities, right? I hired a personality based hire, not necessarily whether, you know, they can do X, Y, and Z. I wanted someone that was congruent with what, you know, our, our values were as a company and that they can portray that to the end customer yeah. as a spouse. Yeah, absolutely. Celebrate. So, so let's talk about um, the content you're putting on your website then. I'd love for um, people to be able to visit your website. So first of all, what's your website? It's ArborView, A-R-B-O-R, View, V-I-E-W, homebuyers.com. Okay. And guys, we're going to link that down in the description below. So make sure you go click on that and check out what he's putting out. But can you walk us through some of the content? I mean, you know me, I love content. Content is my thing. So I always love hearing what other people are doing with their content. So what are you putting... And I, first of all, before I go, before I, you answer that, I love the fact that you said that the website is the center of everything because guys, it has to be that way. You don't own Google. You don't own Facebook. You don't own YouTube. You don't own anything but your website, even this podcast right here, right? Like this podcast, I don't own this podcast. If Apple podcasts decide to kick me off, I'm screwed, right? So <laughs> these, are, these are things you need to be thinking about. And so a website is, should be the core of everything that you push people to. This is why you know, vanity metrics like trying to build YouTube subscribers or uh, followers on Instagram, likes on Facebook, it's all smoke and mirrors at the end of the day because you want people to convert and the only way they do that is through your website. So let's talk about the content you're putting on your website. I wanted to throw that in there to frame that up because you, you mentioned it, but I really wanted to capitalize on that with people because... Yeah. They need to hear that. So what are you doing for content wise on your website? So we got a few different sort of uh, lenses that we look at it through. Obviously, like we get testimonial videos on like every single closing that we can. At this mm -hmm. point, I don't even get them anymore. Like my acquisition guy goes to closing and gets the testimonial videos from the sellers um, at the, you know, at the closing table. And I don't, you know, I don't even go to the closings anymore. I just pop into the attorney's office beforehand, sign my documents and leave, you know. <laughs> Um, but he goes to the actual closing. So we're uploading testimonial videos. And one thing I found, um, is that I actually, uh, title and put the description in my testimonial videos around, I, I, I stuff those with kind of keywords and content that are related to, and then I tag them with a specific location. So like if the seller lived in Mableton, Georgia, which is a suburb mm -hmm. of Atlanta, right? We're tagging the video with Mableton, Georgia, you know, uh, sell a house fast for cash, Mableton, Georgia, right? That is a good idea. I love that. But it's that. a testimonial video. Yes. So it's, you know, and then I have a whole separate yes. group of videos that are around long tail keywords, topics. I have some, maybe they're like, I have the, I have the investor tactics series, uh, which doesn't get a lot of traffic from a you know keyword search standpoint, but once they're in our YouTube channel, they can start seeing this other content that we do. Mm -hmm. And it's just talking about the different things that other investors might do, right? How we're different from them. Um, and then I do long tail keyword based videos. I literally just go in my Google search console and I go in my AdWords and I look at the keywords that people are searching to get to our website. And I make videos around those keywords and just, Sometimes I have three, four, five videos of the same thing, right? But they're all kind of a little bit different. Um, yeah, so. this is all music to my ears. Like I love that Brad's doing this, and this is why I wanted to get him on the the show here because he he's one person that you look at and like what I preach. He's actually like doing it right and doing it really well. Um, and, and so like, and and I got to dive in deeper into your content, and see what you got going on, so that I can like maybe get ideas out of that. But the fact that I, I want to go back to what you mentioned, the, the little tip about how you, with your testimonial videos, you kind of tag the metadata specific to that market that you just bought the property in. Yep. I think that holds a lot of value because the more relevance that you create around a specific service, 
for somebody, the more likely you are to actually bring more leads in from a yeah SEO standpoint or a search engine standpoint, but also right. like actually closing them because they realize like, oh, heck, you know, Brad's company, they actually close on deals. And I think you said Mabel, is it Mabel? George Mabelton Rogers? was just a Mabelton one server version. of Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. So, so like anything like that. And cause like you look at like Atlanta, obviously is a really big, really big area. And even right. where I live, Chicago is a really big area. But if you say like, Arlington Heights, or if you say Oak Lawn, we close deals in Oak Lawn, it's still a Chicago suburb, but it's its own little city. That creates a lot more relevance around somebody that maybe has a deal in Oak Lawn, right? Or for Correct. instance, for you, Ableton. So um, I think that's really, really, really good advice and something that people need to be doing more of. So, so let's go into another conversation here. I really sure. want to talk about uh, Google My Business, right? So Google yeah, yeah. My Business is a really big deal right now, I think, because especially the fact that, you know, Google's pushing that really hard, but also now more than ever, we're in an instant information age where somebody can literally say, for instance, if they want to go to a restaurant, a local restaurant, they're not going to the yellow pages anymore. They're going to Google Maps and typing in restaurants near me. Right. And that's pulling up restaurants and the way... Google categorizes it is by, you know, reviews. It categorizes it by the amount of content you have on the listing, the relevance to your search and all that stuff. So what are you doing from a Google My Business standpoint? I love Google My Business, especially for real estate investors. So what are you doing uh, to actually build that up? Trying to get more reviews. That's like pulling teeth, trying to get yeah. people to leave reviews. Oh, so I've got, you know, we, we try to send an email, um, like immediately after closing or whatever. And I have my leads manager, uh, Missy, who talks to all the people, like send that out and say, Hey, thanks for, you know, da, 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 da. try to get them to leave a review to yeah. us. And then obviously, you know, geographically targeting, you know, from all these, cause we, like you said, Atlanta went, if you're not from Atlanta and you're speaking to a native Atlantan and they say, where are you from? I say I'm from Atlanta because it's too hard for me to explain. Yes. Okay. I'm from mm -hmm. Cobb County and I, you know, like I personally grew up in a city <laughs> called Powder Springs, Georgia. I yeah. live in Canton, Georgia now. Like there's all these little cities around Atlanta, just like you're in Chicago. So everyone around here knows where you live based on the town, the city you live in, but we all know that we're in right. greater Metro Atlanta, but we don't say right. we're from like Atlanta unless you're in the city, which I actually don't buy a ton of houses in city proper of Atlanta. Most of the stuff I buy is all around Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, but just making sure that we're, we're, we've got pictures up there and I got, I really got to do a better job at it. And that's what my new assistant I just hired last week is going to help me with is really just making sure all the little details are there. I've got it, the pages built out and, and that sort of thing, but really focusing on that, really getting more um, reviews on there so that we are ranking better that way. So Yeah, for sure. So then from a, a PPC standpoint, you said you're doing PPC, right? I've been doing PPC since uh, December of 2016. So a lot of people are scared of those three letters, right? Because right. PPC has a bad reputation for, you know, jacking up the prices uh, of the, the cost per click, uh, not getting leads in, not getting quality leads in and all this other, you know, stuff that goes through. So what results are you seeing with PPC right now and maybe comparison to the past? And with the results that you're getting, what are you doing in order to maximize the results for PPC in order to get good quality leads in for yourself? Well, it's, it's way more expensive than it used to be. I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, that's more expensive. I'm bailing out. If you're still getting a good positive ROI and you have to look at it from yeah. an ROI perspective, you got to know your cost per deal and you have to know your revenue per deal. Mm -hmm. And if you're still profitable, then, then keep rolling with it, right? There are certain marketing channels I do that are more profitable than others, but I always do PPC because that goes back to my website. I'm driving traffic yep. to my site, you know, and, and we get... PPC leads, there are fewer of them, but they're higher quality leads, right? So naturally they're more expensive versus maybe like a text marketing or something, right? You're going to get a lot more leads. They're going to be a little bit less quality. Yeah, they're cheaper per lead, but it's all relative, right? And what matters is your ROI on it, not necessarily your cost per lead. It's what's your cost per deal, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at it is my cost per deal. And I also look at, we kind of 80, 20 it constantly. So me, I have a, PPC guy that manages my PPC. Uh, he's been managing it for since the beginning. 
Um, but I still know enough about it. I educated myself on it where we have monthly conversations about what's going on. He goes in and pulls the levers and does the things, right? So I don't have to be logged into my AdWords all the time. But I, I know what's going on at all times. I'm, once a week, I'm looking at my performance and what's happening. And, you know, I can say, okay, well, what, what happened here? and What happened there? And, you know, oh, make this change. You know, we were, we were at Investor Field a couple weeks ago. Like mm -hmm. some people had some tips. I called, I sent him a text while we were there. Like, hey, have we looked at this on the account? You know? Yeah. And uh, so he, we're, we're always doing an 80-20 and we're looking at where the deal's coming from. Not necessarily where the lead's coming from, but where, what keywords are we getting deals from? And we're doubling down on that. And, and putting more ad budget towards those things versus the other things that maybe we're getting leads, but they're not so much deals, you know? And that's yeah. a constant, every two weeks we send them a feedback. Uh, we have a spreadsheet that we keep of all the leads we got. And, and it's sort of like, what happened with that lead? Was it a good lead? What do you rate it? Da, 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 da. Every two weeks he gets that list from my leads manager. So he's always in there making sure that we're making little tweaks um, cause it's not always a set it and forget it thing with PPC. Like you have to be managing it. You're not going to be making a ton of changes after you first get it rolling, but you've always got to be kind of tweaking it. Yeah. Um, for example, uh, when, when, uh, the iBuyers came into town, uh, they came into Atlanta in summer of 2018. Um, we really had to go in and readjust some things and, and cause they inflated the price for everything in our market. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but, so yeah, absolutely. Keeping your pulse on it. That's a big deal. So right. I want to recap something that you that literally like almost that entire last couple of minutes that you really pounded on that so many people miss out on is in marketing guys. Don't always look for what's, the, what's the cheapest I can get something for. Right. So like, obviously you want to keep, and let me, let me paraphrase this. So like you obviously want to keep your cost per deal down as much as you can. Right. But the bottom line is, is that, you know, this is where it cracks me up with a lot of like uh, data service providers that really like they, they market hard and tell people like, we're the cheapest on the market. We have the cheapest data for you. Or, you know, some, there's tons of skip tracing services out there now that say like, we, we could skip trace for, you know, X amount of cents per lead. And then uh, it's the cheapest on the market and stuff like that. And then like people don't get deals out of it. And, and so like, stop focusing on how cheap you can get marketing focus on how many deals you can get out of it. Right. So like, you know, for instance, for me, for my business, <laughs> my cost per lead is, or a cost per actual client is actually pretty high, but the ROI I get from that client is like sometimes 20, 30 X that. So in order for me, and I know this is a little bit different for you guys, but I want to, I want you to contextualize this. So for me, I, my, my ideal clientele is in masterminds there, you know, I have to speak on, you know, stages that, you know, I got to pay X amount of thousands of dollars to speak on and stuff like that. So my investment to a specific mastermind might be 20 or $30,000 a year, but I might pull like five, 10 clients out of that, that pay me anywhere from 2,500 to five grand a month. That is like a massive ROI. And I could spend less money on running Facebook ads and trying to beat my head against the wall, trying to get clients that way. But the truth of the matter is, is that in order for me to get good quality deals, I got to spend a lot of money on the front end, but then the ROI is massive on the back end. So focus on that with your marketing. And, and as a real estate investor, I think this is where a lot of people get sucked in the trap is they, they try to spend so much less money as they possibly can in order to get leads in. And like you said, deals, is what you got to focus on. Like what's my actual ROI on the, the marketing I'm spending in? Like you said, PPC is significantly more expensive than a lot of other marketing channels. But if you're getting deals out of it and you're analyzing, Hey, how much money did I make on this deal in comparison to how much did I spend on the actual PPC campaign? You might be surprised and find out that it was actually worth your money after all. So, uh, you know, that's a total, uh, that's a total misnomer. I think on a lot of, uh, and real estate investors and the way they look at marketing. So, Brad, this has been absolutely fantastic. You have dropped so much value in this episode, but I do have to let you go as promised. But uh, I appreciate everything you shared. I do want to give you the opportunity. If somebody wanted to reach out to you, maybe they are in the Atlanta metro area and want to connect with you in some way, shape, or form, or somebody just wants to get in contact with you and learn more about what you got going on, uh, what would be the best way for somebody to get in contact with you, whether that's you know social media, whether that's email, phone number, website, whatever you want to get out? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, obviously you got my website before and then my email address there is just brad at arborviewhomebuyers.com. 
Um, and then uh, I'm on Facebook, Brad Woodall. Um, and then if you're local here in the market, I run a, I run a meetup group here in the county I live in, in Cherokee County. We've got a meetup group. If you're local to this area and you want to come to the group, you know, come on out. Um, so that's different ways to get in touch with me. Um, and then once you kind of get a hold of me, and if I feel like uh, I want to give me my phone number, I will. And then the best thing to do is just call me because I'm a busy guy running around, got crazy kids in the other yeah. room screaming and yelling. So. Absolutely. And we'll, so guys, we'll link all that in the description below so you can get con and connected into, uh, in connections with Brad and make sure you do reach out to him. So Brad, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for being on the show today. And we look forward to having you back again soon. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining in and listening to the REI Marketing Weekly. Uh, make sure you are subscribed if you're not already. If you're on Apple Podcasts, now is the time to head back to the actual homepage of this show. Leave me a five-star review with your thoughts on this episode. I'll much appreciate that. Obviously, reach out if you have any questions for me. You can email me, josh at colormedia.com, color spelled C-U-L-L-E-R. And then make sure you are pre-ordering the REI marketing book that is going to be coming out soon, guys. Uh, don't have a specific release date, but it is coming out soon. The reason why we've taken a little bit more time is we've actually put a little bit more love into building the book out. So it's a great experience for you, but all you got to do is pay shipping costs. It's a free book. Go to reimarketingbook.com. Yes, this is a marketing way to actually get you into my funnel. So you can, you know, see through the glass on that one, but all you got to do is go to reimarketingbook.com and there is tons of value in it. Jam packed full of content. Uh, so it's not just a, a selling tool for you guys. You're going to actually get value. So one more time, reimarketingbook.com for pre-orders. Make sure you do that. Thank you so much for joining in and we will catch you guys on the next one. See you later.